Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, accompanied by Belgian foreign Haja Labib, visited a hospital in Brussels on Thursday where Ukrainian servicemen are undergoing treatment. Zelensky met with soldiers who have been receiving care in the burn center since early September and handed out some state awards. Zelensky has been in the Belgian capital to meet with European Union leaders and NATO defense ministers to discuss his victory plan to end the country's devastating war with Russia. Major points of the plan include an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO and permission to use Western-supplied longer-range missiles to strike military targets deep inside Russia, steps that have been met with reluctance by Kiev's allies so far. The EU is a key supporter of Ukraine, a candidate member of the 27-nation bloc, as it fights Russia's invasion that began more than two and a half years ago. Thursday's talks in Brussels come as Ukrainian troops are struggling to hold off better-equipped Russian forces, especially in the eastern Donetsk region where they are gradually being pushed back. Kiev is surviving with Western help, but Ukraine says it is coming too slowly. Указом президента України за особисту мужність виявлено під час бойових дій нагороджено орденом за мужність третього ступеня Пучкова Артема Михайловича солдат. Артем Михайлович, не буде чіпати за руки. Пісно вам хочу вам боліче на голову. Питалися. Ну а що? Давай. Указом президента України за особисту мужність виявлено під час бойових дій нагороджено віддалі за військову службу України Ахрімівка Анатолія Васильовича солдат. Слава Україні! European Union leaders arrived at a summit in Brussels Thursday to seek ways to make the bloc a more hostile destination for migrants and asylum seekers following a recent surge in support for the extreme right. As the summit opened, the 27 EU leaders prepared to look at plans to speed up initiatives to get unwanted migrants out of the bloc and process asylum applications far outside their borders. The tenor of the debate is a far cry from 2015, less than a decade ago, when the EU was faced with a migration crisis. Well over a million migrants and refugees sought help then, mainly from the Middle East and Afghanistan. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the EU's dominant national leader at the time, famously said, we can manage that. Now, EU leaders want to manage and seal off their borders ever more tightly, embracing initiatives that would have looked unacceptable only a few years ago. In recent weeks, Poland has said it wants to temporarily suspend the right to asylum, Italy has opened two centers to process asylum seekers outside its borders in Albania and Germany has reinstated border controls, all of them measures going in the same direction. With the extreme right surging in the EU parliamentary elections in June and in other polls in Germany and Austria since, migration remains a trigger button for leaders. On Wednesday, an Italian Navy ship docked at the Albanian port of Shenzhen to bring the first group of 16 migrants intercepted in international waters for processing there. Under a five-year deal signed last November by Italian Premier Giorgia Maloney and her Albanian counterpart, Edi Rama, up to 3,000 migrants picked up by the Italian Coast Guard in international waters each month will be sheltered in Albania. They will be screened initially on board the ships that rescue them before being sent to Albania for further assessment.
U.S. President Joe Biden has announced a new military aid package worth $425 million U.S. dollars during a telephone conversation with his Ukrainian counterpart Volodymyr Zelensky. The White House noted that the new U.S. military aid package contains additional air defense equipment, air-to-ground munitions, armored vehicles, and critical munitions to meet Ukraine's urgent needs. In addition, the United States intends to provide Ukraine with additional weapons in the coming months, particularly hundreds of air defense interceptors, dozens of tactical air defense systems, additional artillery systems, significant quantities of ammunition, hundreds of armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles, and thousands of additional armored vehicles, all of which will help to equip Ukraine's armed forces. It is also noted that Zelensky briefed Biden on his plan to achieve victory over Russia, and the two leaders instructed their teams to continue consultations on further steps. The Ukrainian president, in turn, thanked Biden, both parties in Congress and the American people for the announced defense package. Zelensky noted that during his conversation with the U.S. president, he suggested exploring the potential for joint weapons production and emphasized the need for further training for the Ukrainian military. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, the new assistance package includes ammunition for NASM's surface-to-air missile systems, HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems, Stinger man-portable surface-to-air missile systems and RIM-7 anti-aircraft missiles, 155mm and 105mm artillery rounds, ammunition for TOW anti-armor systems, Javelin and AT-4 anti-armor systems, along with vehicles, small arms and ammunition. The Pentagon said the U.S. has provided Ukraine with a total of $59.1 billion in military assistance since the start of the special military operation and $59.8 billion since the beginning of President Biden's term. According to the White House, a virtual leader-level meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group will take place in November.